Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Tonight I'm watching another episode of Outlander. This is going to be episode 7 from season 3. Jamie and Claire had just been reunited in episode 6. And it looks like Claire has gotten herself into a little bit of trouble. Well, she hasn't gotten herself into trouble. Trouble has found her in the form of this man who has broken into Jamie's room looking for his ledgers. And of course, Claire, not knowing what was going on, went into the room and was surprised by this man who is now holding her hostage or he's going to, going to attack her. He has threatened to rape her. So that's where we stand at this point. Now, in that previous episode, we got to be reunited with some of the old characters from earlier days, like Fergus, for instance. Of course, this is not the same actor that played Fergus in the previous season or in the earlier episodes of this season. This is an older actor because, of course, we're so many years further into the future. We're 20 years further into the future. So Fergus, who was probably, I don't know, eight, was he eight or ten years old when they were in France and when they came back to Scotland during a Jacobite uprising, I'm assuming he was somewhere between, say, eight and 12. This is 20 years later now, so he's 28 to 32, I would assume. And, of course, he's he lost his hand. He had his hand chopped off by the British soldier in the, one of the earlier episodes when he was a younger boy. So now he has this wooden hand. And, of course, his first meeting with Claire, she noticed that immediately when she went to take his hands. And we also met one of Jenny and Ian's children, Ian, which I believe was the, the baby that was born right around that same time that Fergus lost his hand, but he was the baby that was born when Fergus shot the crow or the raven, whatever that bird was, the blackbird. And that drew the attention of the British soldiers who came down looking for this weapon that was fired because these weapons have been outlawed. So I believe that this Ian that we met toward the end of that episode is the same Ian that was the child that was born. I could be mistaken about that, though. So that's where we are today. We're going to go ahead and continue with episode number seven. And we're moving past the halfway point in the season. So we'll be getting on to season four here before too much longer. Now, before I get started, let me mention I do have a Patreon page now. So if you're interested in supporting the channel or if you're interested in watching my full-length reactions, you can head over to patreon.com slash 31mike. Now let's go ahead and get started with the episode. Cream de mint. Well, I take it there's a fire, Stacy. <laughs> Hmm. That's what. No, I'm not even going to bed you. I'm just going to kill you. <laughs> oh. Well, that'll be it for him. <laughs> Oh, he's not dead. He's breathing. Sassanak. Well, now the doctor in her is kicking in. Sassanak, what are you thinking? I can't let him suffer. I have to do something. Why? He... I have to try and save him, Jamie. You understand? Well, she took the Hippocratic Oath. Please. You have some whiskey? Percival will come around looking for him. That is quite a problem, Mr. Malcolm, considering the cask so Percival is searching for are hidden in my basement. <laughs> well, not for that long. puts her in a bit of a pickle. No harm will before you on my account. You have my what? Allow me to send one of my more discreet girls to put um, everything in order right away. Yes, you matter. Hole in his skull. 
I will see what I can do. <laughs> that might, might thank you. Might seem to be like witchcraft or black magic. Inform them of events shortly. Back at this time. Still have some time. I'll need to go to the apothecary. Get some laudanum and things. Unique woman. Ah. Uh, what about the print shop, Uncle Jamie? If Sir Percival sent men here, he may look there as well. Uh, let him look. I don't keep casks at the shop. But you do keep I have to get used to Fergus being an Sir older Percival man now. That and he never will. I don't want to find a trace of the pamphlets. They're well hidden. Besides, moving them now would be more dangerous than leaving them be. Particularly now that you're under Sir Percival's watchful gaze. Why? It requires immediate attention. Please wait your turn, madam. But it's urgent. So too is the health of my dear sister. And what of Hemlock? It is said that it aids symptoms hmm. such as hers. Hemlock. I'm an experienced healer. I would be happy to treat your sister if you just allow me to go ahead of you. Free of charge. In recognition of my generosity. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll need a bottle of laudanum, some ground yarrow root, and tormentil. And please hurry. A man's life is at stake. You see, that'll be two shillings, madam. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> He's checking out that purse. Archibald and Margaret Campbell. Thank you. Seventy. I'll no go higher. Without the <laughs> crown seal, I'm the one taking all the risk possessing. Good haggling going on. 75 pounds, and you'll get three casks of the creme de menthe as well. Well, that's where we get the title of the show from. I'm no man to refuse liquors at no charge. Give a bargain. You're a good man. Thank you. It's by campfire without flinching. She saved many lives. No, there were rumors. What kind of rumors? Rumors? That the lady took a few lives as well. She's not a woman you want to cross my. <laughs> Fancy Claire was forced to kill men. Likely they deserved it. Even so, she has created a bit of a catastrophe, no? Aye. <laughs> Hold his legs. <laughs> Doing? Ah. The bastard woke and started making considerable noise. He's having a lucid interval. <laughs> it happens with a brain injury. You can't be rough with his head like that. Oh, you get a better way to keep him quiet. Yes. <laughs> Laudanum. Remove the stock. Remove it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Just pour it in. Most honorable wife. Hi. Mr. Melcom. Who is it? Percival is here to see you. Hmm. Bad timing. Well, at least they got him shut up. I can assure you, Mr. Malcolm, my interests today relate only to business. Perhaps a quick taste after our business is concluded. Don't make me regret hiring you. I'm here to search these premises at once. And what cause have you to do that? You are withholding from me, Mr. Malcolm. But she's, she's still wearing Frank's ring. Is there ever an explanation given as to why? Considering not only did he... Considering not only that he passed away, but he was going to leave her and divorce her. You're welcome to see for yourself. Of course I am. I certainly don't need your permission. Hmm. No, but the 
pressure on his brain, Will, if I don't release it. Of course, you go a little too deep, it's going to kill him. Hopefully they didn't forget something. Is that Bradley? No, it's a Percival assist, just water. Oh, hmm. we have a that was close. This is why I cannot store anything of value down here. There's nothing here. How can we be sure? We've searched the whole basement. I know you're up to something. Just don't search Jamie's room. I'll be watching you. This ends now. Sassanay. Well, he's dead. Oh, he died anyway. I've got your wish. I have another patient to see. I won't be long. Patient? And who might that be? Oh, that's right. I forgot about the woman. Margaret Campbell. The man's I sister. I brother at Hawes and I offered to examine her. You don't again know who these people are. <laughs> you can't go alone. Fergus will escort you. As you said, I've traveled thousands of miles in 200 years. I can certainly manage to get across town alone. Aye. Sir Percival. Sir Percival doesn't know who I am. Or... Or what I've done <laughs> to the night. Or what happened, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't really want to let her out of his sight. Afraid she'll disappear. Moon one day. There's money to be made in this city. And... <laughs> oh. well, he's got his eye on the waitress. Every time we hear, she is enchanting. No? Bonnie. <laughs> Tonight is the night you do more than just look. But I've never baited a last before. Then this is your opportunity, brother. Simple enough. And the pièce de résistance is perhaps the most important part of the set. Repeat one and two. <laughs> <laughs> what can I fetch you? Nothing. Hmm. Nothing. Are you sure? Your friend just beckon me over. You're the bonniest lass I've ever set eyes on. Can I offer you a drink? Whatever your heart desires. <laughs> Whiskey. Got somebody watching him. <laughs> <laughs> 